it cannot be a gimmick. It isn't a formula. Preaching in and of itself is never the end, right? This has to be about proclaiming God's word, pointing people back to Jesus. And the minute it gets too gimmicky, then we lose. That is not the intention at all. So yeah. if I roll into your church, what am I going to experience? You've already told me it's a both and kind of place for insiders, outsiders. You've told me it's creative. You're a guy that values the spoken uh, expression of the word of God. So what, what am I going to experience in my 60 to 90 minutes that I'm on campus there at your church? Yeah, well, I hope, and you hear this from everyone, but I hope from the moment you step in, you're, you're, you're welcomed, you're acknowledged, you're seen. And part of what that means for us is uh, we don't expect you to look like us, sound like us, think like us. We, we know going in that we have that wide variety of people there. So hopefully you walk in going, okay, so at least that. Uh, I think you will see at some point in the service, uh, you know, obviously for us, worship is we it, it's it's important. Uh, it's it's passionate. It's creative. But I think you would also see fairly early on the acknowledgement in the room that we're not all in the same place. And it isn't like this overt, hey, would you please stand and uh, introduce yourself if you're a visitor or anything like <laughs> I miss that? miss those days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You wear the little ribbon that's visitor. Right. That's yeah. so, so effective, so effective. Um, but like oftentimes, and this will be a vision uh, bump with some people. Uh, even recently, I had this conversation with someone who's fairly new and they came from an environment where uh, the assumption was everybody in the room kind of sort of agrees. Mm. And so a little almost, I'm not going to say offensive, but we were getting there really just uh, not liking, for instance, when we're in this Lord's Prayer series. And I say, just you just kind of tuck it in and say, so we're in the gospel of Matthew chapter six. Now, let me just say, Matthew was an eyewitness to the to the ministry of Jesus. And he is one of those first four books of the New Testament. And you see him. And so there'll just be like two or three sentences of, of explanation. I'm acknowledging to someone in the room who's going, I don't know who Matthew mm -hmm. is, but I have uh, sometimes a visitor will come in and say, well, why do you take the time to do that? But well, it's because not everyone thinks or knows or, you know, believes what you believe yet. And so uh, hopefully you would you would you would begin to sense some of that. By the time you get to the teach, I think one of the things you would notice is that we clearly value the word of God. We open the word of God. We understand that there are some 21st century challenges to preaching. Mm -hmm. And we try to uh we try to 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 take a swing at some of those things. Uh while adhering to, uh, you know, to the exposition of the gospel. And I love, I love, you know, not to go all, you know, sermon nerdy on you here, but I love a long time ago, D.A. Carson had a, uh, wrote a, an essay on preaching that really, there were some things that resonated with me. And one of them was, he said, you know, exposition or expository preaching it does not only, or doesn't have to mean I'm going to preach a half a verse at a time through Obadiah and take this long. Now that's a, that's a way to do it. I'm not I'm not devaluing that. He says that's a form of exposition. But what he said was, which for me helps is uh he said exposition is just by definition unpacking what is there. So whether I'm in some epic story in the Old Testament, some sweeping narrative or whether we're dialing in phrase by phrase in the Lord's prayer as as an expositor of God's word my 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 responsibility my calling is to unpack what is there so that that helps but then as we're doing that i also want to i want to be cognizant of the challenge of preaching a to a room full of people that that don't all think the same and b uh to an audience whose attention span is shrinking at maybe historic rates, right? I mean, uh, the the ability for us to pay attention for very mm -hmm. long keeps shortening. Mm -hmm. 
So for me, I know, and you and I were talking about this. I'm not saying this is a formula. I'm not saying this for everybody. I don't even tell all of our young pastors who preach that they have to do this, though I ask them to factor it in. I try to build into our teach times moments where people can come up for air, moments where I can intentionally boost their engagement a little bit. Uh, and that can happen in a variety of ways. It's the age old, hey, turn to your neighbor and, and talk to someone for sure. But it's also maybe a little bit longer investment of time just going, no, really settle in with four or five people around you. And by the way, you have to put the, you have to coach them through that too, because I want this to be safe for that new person. Mm -hmm. So I don't want them freaking out and thinking, I just joined a small group, <laughs> right? So you, you have to coach people and you have some fun with that and say, hey, if you don't want to do this, just, you know, give the people next to you the stink eye. They'll leave you alone. You know, you just kind of have fun with it. But we'll have people have engage in real conversations. Now, the way that works as a multi-site church that preaches simultaneously to everybody. So we simulcast this mm -hmm. thing is because I think uh, what I value is interactivity, not just between people sitting next to each other, but with me. Mm. So one of the things, and I think we were talking about this, that helps me is, uh, okay, you guys talk to each other about this. This past weekend, we were in, uh, forgive us, uh, as we have forgiven our debtors. Mm. So that's where we were, right? So we're in a big, big thing on forgiveness. Well, I asked everybody to use the app and say, you let me know what your questions are about forgiveness. We won't be able to touch on all of them, but let me know. And we'll, we'll go through some of these questions at the end. To me, it's really important for the people, particularly at the site, to be able to go, yeah, we made him talk about something. Huh. We got through to him. And so I'll be able to say, hey, so somebody from Fenton, somebody from our Mid Rivers campus is asking a question about X. And then you get to go a little bit further with it. And so my team will curate all of these things and then just flood me with some of these questions, of course, not being able to answer them all. But that's a little bit of those are some of the ways. And then there's a variety of other things. We Like this week, we had a there's a beautiful poem by a a uh, an Anglican priest in the UK, uh, Malcolm Geit, uh, who wrote a sonnet about this. And so in the middle of the talk. I'm now giving room for them to catch up with me. I'm giving room for their hearts to catch up with their heads. We've talked about things. I even taught the parable from Matthew 18. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, you're going to have questions. But the first thing that I'm noticing is in my own heart is that I have names that have just downloaded. I know people I'm struggling with this idea of forgiveness mm -hmm. with. Let's take a minute. Now the music's playing for just a minute. We don't make this a big long thing, but it's a it's it's sort of a meditative moment. Now everybody is catching their breath. And then someone a, a young woman just reads this beautiful sonnet. And then we take a beat. And then I come back in and we finish the rest of the teach. So those are just some examples, real-time examples of how we are trying to innovate the way we're teaching, always grounded in Scripture. We're always, always, always moving towards that. But in some ways, trying to leave room for there to be breaths mm -hmm. and, and, and these emotional beats and then ways to boost engagement. And then the last thing I would say about that, it cannot be a gimmick. I mean, it just, it isn't a formula. Some weeks we don't do that at all. I mean, it, it, you know, because preaching, I think it's Carson that says this, preaching in and of itself is never the end, right? This has to be about proclaiming God's word, pointing people back to Jesus. And the minute it gets too gimmicky, it gets too, hey, look at that. Wasn't he clever? Hey, look at that. They did that thing. Then we lose. That is not the intention at all. Mm -hmm. But if we can engage people, and keep them in, you know, in the conversation long enough to hear truth. Well, that's a thing.